This video we're going to talk about Tyrion's new love interest, the new season 7 trailer that was recently released, I think actually yesterday, and Littlefinger and Sansa's new relationship. This is your Game of Thrones news update where I take what I consider to be the most important Game of Thrones news from the past week and I share it with you. Warning, there are spoilers for season 7 of Game of Thrones, so if you're trying to stay spoiler free, I might not watch this video. Alright, so first a new trailer was released in Greece for season 7 and there wasn't actually a lot of new footage, at least not enough to warrant a separate video where I broke it down. So I'm just gonna quickly go over that trailer here, it was uh, maybe about 25 seconds. First we see Daenerys, Tyrion, and two Unsullied entering a door at Dragonstone. Not very shocking as Daenerys would want to search her family home. Perhaps she's looking for something in particular in this shot. We also see Danny approach one of Stannis' banners at Dragonstone and rip it down after looking at it for a second. The pause could be her imagining other people, the usurper's family, in her family's home putting up their banners, and it could disgust her a little bit. While these two scenes take place, John repeats what we heard in a previous trailer. For centuries, our families fought together against their common enemy, despite their differences. Again, making us believe that John is talking to Danny, but he could be talking to the other Northern Lords or even the Knights of the Vale. We've seen misleading audio in past seasons, for sure. We get the same shots of a horse riding away and the 12 companions in a circle beyond the wall. The horse riding away probably will carry an injured John post fighting an other. The companions in a circle will be them bracing for a fight against the others and their whites. We actually got a new shot of Sansa in a pretty awesome looking cloak. That hood is amazing. As John ends on differences, this shot takes place with her closing her eyes. I think this is more trying to push the John versus Sansa plot we've been hearing non-stop. But in my headcanon, this could be Sansa being told something by Littlefinger and her deciding to do something super shitty, or her watching him die by her order. I, I really hope for the latter. We have Arya looking concerned, but we've seen that shot before. She could be seeing Winterfell again for the first time since she left, and it's gonna look a bit different because a few battles have been fought in and around it, and that could shock her. Or she could have come upon the Brotherhood without banners and she sees the Hound and the Hound with others on her list. It would be shocking to see him alive and then him alive with people that are on her to be killed list. Next, Cersei walking into her painted map war room. She looks agitated, so I'm guessing this is after news of Danny coming for her. We also see the mountain guarding her, and I am digging the black look on Cersei. She kind of looks like a brother of the watch, but more importantly, she's dressing warmer, which means it's getting colder at a very fast rate. What is kind of shocking is that she isn't wearing her crown, or she's not going to be wearing it everywhere. I thought for sure once she got that thing, she was just going to super glue it to her head. We also get Tyrion looking a little nervous as Jon says, despite their suspicions. I don't think Tyrion is suspicious here, but he's nervous about something. Perhaps a visitor has come, maybe John, that has him a bit on edge. Oh hey, I married your sister and your family went to war against mine. Yikes, it, it might be a little bit awkward for Tyrion. We get some quick shots of Jamie, probably at Highgarden, and we get to see his uh, soldier swagger quite a bit, and I love it. I also get the feeling that he's not happy to be there. I mean, are you really happy to go to war? Well, I guess some people might be. And that really he wants to stay by her side, so he's trying to make this a quick in and out job. As John says we need to do the same if we're going to survive, we see the same shot of him pulling out his sword, and then a gorgeous, oh my god, so gorgeous overview of the land beyond the wall. You can see John and his companions traveling, or maybe it's a group of wildlings we're about to see get slaughtered by the others. I could see it going both ways. Next, we get someone approaching the throne, escorted by one of Danny's soldiers. She's obviously holding court. I wouldn't be surprised if this was a scene with a random lord of a nearby territory coming to her after receiving a letter of her intent to take the Seven Kingdoms. Next, a dragon over a battlefield as the Dothraki attack. I think it's so great to see Daenerys will be in these battles fighting. That is what the Dothraki expect of her. We get Lannister soldiers preparing to be barbecue or maybe fighting the Unsullied. It is likely the Unsullied go to the Westerlands and the Dothraki fight at Highgarden, or in the Reach somewhere. Beric with his kick-ass sword, Theon falling to his knees on the shore. I think this is after Yara is captured by Euron and he's a little upset. More Dothraki steamrolling Lannisters, Tormund beyond the wall fighting for his life, 
the Night King who sees Bran warg into a raven or ravens to spy on him. That look is totally, I fucking see you. Bran likely comes out of the raven after this happens, which is when we see him in the wheelchair. John voices over the enemy is real, it's always been real, as these shots happen, and in the end, it ends with a shot of him slicing through a white from a previous trailer. So only a few extra pieces of footage, but still fun to see it rearranged in different territories. We also got the first three episode titles and descriptions revealed, but I went over that extensively in a different video, which I'll link down below if you want my breakdown of those titles and descriptions. I don't want to go over it again here. All right, let's move on to interviews where we got some of the best information and some news that perhaps isn't making me very happy. Amelia Clark talked about her character this season. She said that Danny wants to break the wheel and take control of the Seven Kingdoms, but she doesn't want to simply wipe out anyone who disagrees with her. Which would be a huge improvement from the whole return them to the dirt thing, and I'm happy we won't be getting kneel or die Danny. Well, we still might get that a little. She also mentioned having saddle sores from being on dragons so much this season, or things that the special effects team turn into dragons. A sound designer also confirmed at Con of Thrones there will be a lot of dragon action this season, and I am still on board for Field of Fire 2.0. <sighs> and then something happened that I had been praying wouldn't be true. Peter Dinklage in an interview revealed that Tyrion does in fact have a crush on Daenerys and has romantic feelings for her. Why, d, &D? Why? Why couldn't it just be they work great together and rule together? Why throw in this relationship bullshit? Has Tyrion not had enough relationship drama? Just, uh, stop. But this may tie into one of the showrunners, David, saying there are some surprising hookups this season. I hope it's just Missandei Grey Worm and Yara Ilaria because I really don't want to see Danny and Tyrion happening. However, maybe that is his nervous look in the new trailer. Daenerys says something like, Oh Tyrion, you're my most loyal advisor and friend. I can't wait to be friends forever. And then he's like, yes, friends. Fuck. She does like putting men in the friend zone, which I think is a great place to be with someone that has dragons. I would gladly be in your friend zone, Daenerys. Next, more Jamie and Cersei sex may be happening this season, but anti-Jamie and Cersei people, we may have some hope. Cersei's actress revealed that it is a big season for Jamie and Cersei, and that their relationship is going to become even more complicated more complicated than it's been in previous seasons. She said in an interview, he blindly wholeheartedly loves her. She emotionally vampires him. Which honestly, I think is pretty par for the course for her. Cersei's actress also promised whatever was good in Cersei's life has been erased. And now she's just horrible to one particular character in a truly loathsome way. I'm guessing Jamie, which maybe, just maybe, will finally be enough for him. I have to believe this is leading towards a break for Jamie. He realizes his mistake of giving everything to her when she is so quick to throw him away or just use him. Actually, Jamie's actor did an interview and phrased it in a very relatable way though. He said, they've been together their whole lives. This is truly a 30 year romance that you just can't walk away from. It's not like you go, Oh my god, this is it. You've crossed the line. So I guess that does make sense to some extent, especially in the time they're supposed to live. But man, it got so much worse. Lena even talked about how Jamie wants to discuss the death of their last surviving child, and she's like, don't be such a wet blanket. Part of me thinks this is just how the actress talks, which is awesome, but another part of me hopes Cersei has distanced herself from her children's death that she doesn't even acknowledge it, and this will just drive more of a wedge between Jamie and her. Jamie doesn't understand how she can be so cold. And Cersei's actress did confirm that Cersei is enjoying being on the throne, which she should, she finally got what she wanted. So maybe she's just reached a point where yeah, her kids are dead and she's still grieving, but she finally got the power she always wanted and thought she deserved. Kit Harrington shared that Jon will be more sure of himself and talk a lot more this season, which I'm really looking forward to. Then of course we got more Sansa Jon drama talk, which just fuck. So Kit confirmed Sansa has some very hard feelings about Jon becoming King in the North and that she is going to be making some not so honorable decisions which you know Littlefinger is involved in. Kit did say his character will start to listen to her more this season though. 
but in the beginning he won't listen to her when she questions his decisions and commands. So I guess at some point in the season they finally come to an agreement and can understand each other and he starts to listen a little bit more. Maybe that'll stop her from being such a backstabbing asshole this season. However, Kit did say what happens this season goes beyond siblings arguing and into two people struggling over power. Which Sansa just, just stop girl, let Jon have the power. You still are pretty powerful in your own right. You, you, you just gotta stop. You're, you're gonna fuck everything up. On Sophie Turner's end, she said Sansa has learned to manipulate. She is now one of the best, and she is much more clever now. I'm reading into this, and I now 100% believe she uses what's between her legs, her vagina, to seduce Littlefinger and get what she wants. I mean, Aiden Littlefinger's actor did say in a recent interview, Baelish continues to build his relationship with Sansa this season, and that their relationship evolves this season into something new and something the viewers have not seen before. Sex. They're probably going to have sex. I'll go get my puke bucket, someone else get the alcohol and pills. Sophie also teased that it's becoming hard to know who is loyal, even family, but I'm passing that off as Sophie Turner just trolling, which she loves to do. What gave me some relief is her statement in another interview about her character. She said, I think she may change a little, but at the end of the day, I think her heart is still good. The way she deals with her problems and her enemies may be different from how she dealt with them in the day when she was 13 or so. So she may be playing the game this season, but she's not going to be a total monster and betray her family. Too badly. Next, Euron's actor discussed his character in season 7 a little bit more. If you remember a month ago, I think about a month ago, he talked about how he was going to make Ramsay look like a puppy. Well, now Euron's actor is saying that Euron is even more charming this season, and a co-executive producer claims that he'll kill you and then steal your girlfriend. Which I guess is worse than the Disney evil Euron we've been getting. But on the topic of evil, Euron's actor elaborated on the difference between Ramsay and Euron. He said, Ramsay was a great character and to me was 100% evil. I think Euron is not. I'm more like a hooligan. The guy you met at the King's Moot is not the guy you'll meet on his ship. He's different with different people to get what he wants. Which, thank God, I was going to be so disappointed if the Euron from last season was just the Euron we were getting. Knowing he's a terrifying maniac that's able to kill on a whim has me much more excited about his character. I mean, in the books, he's just a complete loony. He's a man that should be able to seduce a woman and then a little bit later tie her to the front of the boat while pregnant with his child. He also added more weight to the rumor leaks that Cersei and Euron reach an alliance, or maybe marriage alliance. He told EW, For Euron, the question is, who gives me the best odds? Is it the Dragon Mother? No. Is it with Cersei? I think it is. Danny is still trying to be a good, decent, honest person. Cersei sold her soul many years ago. Maybe that's why Euron likes the idea of her. So let me speculate here. I know this is news, but I just can't help myself. What if Cersei and Euron actually have a sexual attraction going on? They both know how to play the game, pretend to be a certain way to get what they want. Yes, Cersei would hate anyone that may take her power away, but Euron may play to that. We were promised some surprising hookups this season. Maybe Cersei and Euron have sex. That would be a huge blow to Jaime though. Maybe that's when he learns from his mistakes as seen in that episode description. He heard rumors of her sleeping around and he realizes he should have listened to them and she'll never really be his, no matter how loyal he is or how much he loves her. And something I really like that he talked about is that in previous seasons, the actors were able to add in some input and maybe change dialogue just a little bit. But for these last two seasons, the directors and the writers are more of, no, shut up, read the words from the script. So they're a lot more protective of the plot and storylines in these last two seasons than before, which makes me think they really have this on lockdown and they're just not guessing and throwing shit around. Next, though, we already have leaks showing John meets both queens this season, Michelle Clapton, costume designer, confirmed that John will be meeting Cersei this season. She said, We had a lot of discussions about does the cape give him presence, or is it better to not have that presence? What are we trying to say? There are times when we removed it because we wanted him to be more vulnerable. Especially, I think, when he saw Danny and he went to see her for the first time in her chamber. We decided to remove it, but then when he went to see Cersei, we put it on. So, there you have it. He does, in fact, meet both queens this season, which all of us following the leaks already knew. 
Lastly, no real George news, except he revealed he's been working very, very hard to the point where he has not been able to keep up with his reading. So, hooray. Not hooray for him specifically, but uh, hooray for us. All right, so that is your Game of Thrones news for the past week. Thank you so much for watching. Please like the video, subscribe, and let me know what you think Euron is going to do this season. I have my own thoughts, but I'm kind of curious how far you think he'll go and how his character will be different than last season.